Greetings from Athens, Greece. I'm Pablo Septimio, a partner of Fortune Greece, director of the Hellenic Entrepreneur Association, and I'm joined by Mr. Troy Armour, Monaco-based entrepreneur who traveled from Nice to Athens for just a couple of days in order to connect with the Hellenic business ecosystem. Troy, you're a serial entrepreneur, you have a background in IT, and at the same time you've founded some 13 years ago Junk Couture, a game-changing platform, a sport as you call it, maybe in the future a global olympiad of recycling, reusing, circular economy solutions and entrepreneurial teaching for students. Can you tell us a bit more about what is Junk Couture, how did it come in mind and what's your plan for its future? Thanks, Pablo. It's great to be here. Um, my first time in Athens. I have wow. to say, my first day in Athens. Uh, it's already been an adventure. Um, I see the ecosystem that has grown up here over the last 10, 20 years. I uh, met some incredible people today. To answer your question, originally Irish, um, now living in Monaco, um, but operating on a global level with Junkature. So while we have bases in six countries, we have presence in 35. To give you an idea what Junkature was about, it all kind of started when I was a kid, really. Um, I just never knew that those things that happened to me as a child would grow into become a global opportunity for me um, and others in so many different fields that have come along in this ride with me. So as a kid, two things. I grew up in rural Ireland in the 70s and 80s. Uh, what did life look like? Life was very sustainable. The word sustainability didn't exist because we didn't need to use that word. Families were naturally, we reused the resources that came into our home. We were circular in a way. The things that, uh, for example, the cornflake box, as kids we used to fight over it because for us was massively important. We could paint on the inside of it, this kind of idea. We did the same with our clothes. We mended clothes, we shared clothes. Again, that was culture. That wasn't any kind of plan. Um, so circularity was a natural way of life and we reinvented it, you say, some decades later as an urgent need to turn entrepreneurship and society towards it. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, so, and then the other part of me as a child was I was terrible at sport. And that was a thing that I hid for many years because I thought that was an embarrassing thing. For me as a, a teenager, what I saw was sport brought so much social capital. So kids who played sport, they got access to being part of a team being celebrated for their skills, getting to travel for the school socially, they were they were recognized. Kids who were much more creative always took the back the backside. They were in the shadows all the time. And in some ways with school also, creativity was never valued. You had to, to, to score points in maths and, and science to go to college. Never was about creativity. So 13 years ago as a hobby, um, because my wife at the time, my wife said, no, we're not putting money in this. this. I don't think this idea is any good. You have already companies, you don't need to do another. So we said, I set out. The promise was with $1,000, could I make a million? That was the original con. I said, okay, at least let me put 1,000 euros. At least let me put 1,000. She said, okay, 1,000 is a max. So, okay, can I build a million revenue from 1,000 euros? So that started out in 20, 2010. I wrote, the 1,000 euros. During the crisis, at the start of the global crisis, like the depth of the crisis, you did that. But it was a challenge for me. I already built three companies. So the challenge for me too was also to show people you don't need money to start a business. Because I'd met many people in life and they'd said, oh, you know, I have an idea for a business, but I just need 50,000. Or I have an idea for a business, I need a partner. I was like, okay, I'm going to show the world that you don't need any of those things, that you have to find a way to do it. So when you have no money, two things happen. You push yourself outside your comfort zone because you have to find people who are willing to buy in at a very low price. And I'll give you examples of that. But the other part is that you become more innovative because we all know money can solve problems. When you don't have it, you have to solve them a different way. That's right. So at the start, I set out, I had a thousand euros. It was one euro to buy a stamp. I had 967 schools at Ireland, so I go, I have got one shot to communicate with a letter to these schools to say, join this movement. They never heard of it before. Let's see what happens. 194 immediately replied to say, we're in. What do we need to do? Wow, that's a tremendous response. It was a great response, right? So, like and then I remember having the conversation with my wife then, right? I said, we got 194 replies. And she's like, okay, what happens now? And I said, now we have a problem because now we have to do it. 
And again, with this concept of no money. So I remember one of the first meetings, I had to convince a production company to produce five events with me having no money to do it. So the conversation was like this. He's like, hey, you're going to need 30 or 40,000 at least. I was like, mm, but you didn't listen. I have no money. I said, maybe I could get 7,000. He's like, he started to laugh. 7,000, what are you talking about? Eventually I came to nine. He said, this is such a crazy idea. I have to do it just to see what happens. But here's the deal. Every night when you sell the tickets at the finish, you pay me 1,800 for the, so we did it like that. We produced five events. We got a call the very next day. I remember the fifth event. We got a call from Tetra Pak to say, are you the guy doing this? We want to be involved. And from that, that was the first sponsorship call that I got inbound. Then we did a deal with Sony. Then we did a deal with a bank. So the first year was successful. The first year on a revenue basis. Now, if I go back, it was 33,000 euro. Still. Right? But had a 3% profit. Had a 3,000 euro profit. Yeah. So. 10% profit. Yeah. yeah. In a, in a, in a business world for a startup, wow. was good, right? Nobody. And, and the big secret there is that there's a lot of bulk and there's a lot of volume. And I love the way you say that. You know, I heard you earlier speak about it. You say this is a future customer base. It has depth. So it's volume of youth. So it's the future consumer. It's an amazing. I, and I have to be honest with you at the start, right? Yeah. I didn't know all that stuff, right? You I found didn't it know. along the way. I found it along the way. So, and then the other thing too is, is you learn on the job. I'm a very big believer of that, right? And the, we had a conversation earlier talking about entrepreneurship and it's the fact is to try, yeah. right? And this was the thing that, that was very crucial because another person would say, ah, you know what, I don't have 50,000 to start, so I'm not going to try it. But I was there going, okay, I built companies before, I got to a million revenue, can I do it with no resources, right? It's funny that Amazon now made a show about that, the secret billionaire, they give him no money, 5,000 euro, put him somewhere, see if he can do it. So it's a similar idea, I had a thousand. So the, the money then start to come in that year two, um, I guess the email address of who I wanted to be a mentor, she was a lady who created a, a global show events around the world. Um, and three days later, she sent me a mail, she called me to say, I want to be involved, I will mentor you for one year. I want you to go through the scale-up phase somewhat succinctly in order to shed light to the plan and how it scales up from now on. So the story is, is I mean, from that I will give an example. The first sponsor, the first time we did that deal was 25,000. Three years later was 1.7 million. Wow. It was just this rapid growth. And 15 right? years later, what are the numbers? How big is so, it? To? How many schools? Well, this is, this is the way budget, this is. we sit down every day and we work to two numbers. We're like, okay, how can we reach a billion kids? We want to enrich and empower the lives of a billion kids and at the same time create a billion dollars revenue. That's the trajectory we're on. So when we take any kind of strategic decision, we ask ourselves, does it contribute to one of those goals or both? And we are very clear that business has a role to pay in impact. It's not just about commercials all the time that we see that there's a way that we can empower and enrich people, not just, not just take all the resources out. How big is the school network at the moment? School network, we're reaching 10,000 schools, but there's 600,000 schools in the world. We have a long way to go, but we believe that we have the right product. In every school in the world, in every classroom, there's creative energy that's dormant. It's waiting for something like this to come along, wake it up, and give it a purpose. We give it a purpose around circularity. We, these kids have ideas that will blow your mind. It's not just, you know, here's a, here's a simple thing made from plastic bags. I want to describe it. When you're born, you're born with a can't switch in your head. Everybody has it. It's at zero when you're born. What I mean by that is when you're five years old, you can put a, a, a towel in your back and believe you're Superman. Because yeah. nobody said you can't. So you would jump off a building if yeah. somebody said you can't do that. When you're a hundred years old, the switch is off completely. You can't do anything. Yeah. As life goes forward, more and more, you start to close your mind to, I, it's not possible. It's not, I can't be yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo. But a teenager between 13 and 18, they know they can't be Superman, but there's so many things that nobody said to them they can't do. So their imagination is still open to the crazy. And sometimes the thing that grows business and the world better than anything is the craziest idea in the room. I love the concept of latent creative power in each and every one of us. And just for our viewers to have a grasp of the innovation and the power of the norm, can you share a few of your global partners? 
So the global partners we have at the minute, they're all leaders in their industry. They see the same things we do as creativity and circularity are the two foundations of global economies and businesses. It's Deloitte, Microsoft, DHL, these people are leading and they want to continue to lead. So they are in the space of going, okay, let's attach to these two important pillars. As AI grows, the last human resource that we have is going to be creativity. It's going to differentiate us from machines. It's the most valuable asset we've got. Why not invest in that? These companies are here because they know they can get right to the root of that before anybody else does. Troy, needless to say that your visit in Athens is not just stuff for entertainment. You're meeting a few people. I've been with many meetings with you. So far, what do you feel? Is our country on the map? Can it be on the map of Junk Couture? Do you know something? I um, came here today with an open mind. It's one of the things that I have. I met this incredible entrepreneur from Greece uh, 18 months ago. We spent some time. We were in a mutual conference in Albania. This guy has been saying to me, why is Greece not on the map of your rollout? You have to come. You have to come. This guy, uh, Anastasios, is saying, you know, Greece is a new, a new kind of uh, visionary in the world, is doing incredible things. I see it today. The people that I have met today, they are open. They, straight away they, they come to these two concepts, the creativity and circularity and go, you're right, this is the future of, of ent enterprise. Why not bring it here? So yes, I see a lot of positive for the future of Greece here with this. I'm adding to what you said that I will do everything in my power and my capacities in all the wide to support your concept because you show that entrepreneurship can be taught, that uh, our kids are the future, not as a buzzword or a motto, but in fact, you prove it every day. And I think that what you do is a global cause and it deserves Greece's attention. Thanks, Pablo. It's a pleasure to be talking sure. here with you today. Very good to have you. Thank you.